Looking for a new way to make your work stand out? Well, I got you covered. In this video, we're gonna go through four different motion design background ideas to make your work pop. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel, Sunduck Film. Drop a like on this video, maybe four likes for each idea. But without wasting more time, let's jump in and let's get started. In our first technique, we're gonna create this gravity effect where shapes will fall down forever. So you can download our project files if you wish to follow along, those links are below. So what we're gonna do is come here to the top, grab any shape you would like to use. And what we wanna do is click on the word fill, set it to none, click okay. Click on the word stroke and set it to solid color and click okay. We'll use a stroke with a six and you can change the color to whatever you like as well. So we'll draw out our shape right here. And what I'm gonna do is come here to the top, control, double click the pan behind tool. So this way the anchor point will be in the center. So what we'll do here is come to the beginning of our timeline, hit PR keyboard for position. And we're simply going to position our uh, rectangle above the comp like this. And we'll add a keyframe. We'll move forward in time. So maybe like four to five seconds. And we'll just have this come straight down like so to below the composition. So simply our animation will look like this. Then we're gonna alt click the stopwatch for position and we're gonna type out loop out with a capital O and open close parenthesis just like this. Make sure your expression looks like mine. So now this will be repeated on forever. So then we'll hit R on our keyboard for rotation and we'll type in time asterisk 40. This way our shape will be rotating here uh, in our comp. So now it's just a matter of duplicating. So we'll take our layer, go to edit, duplicate. We'll hit P on keyboard for position, come here to the first frame, grab our keyframes like so, and we simply can just go to the X value, bring this over, and we can duplicate one more time, do the same exact thing, bring it to the other side, for example. And then we can move, say, one of these layers forward in time, and if you like, you can change the rotation of the time expression to like a negative value for one of these, so they don't all have the same value. So after a little bit of work, here's what we have, and it looks really cool. And another quick technique you can employ with this is to set your shape layers above your title or logo, or whatever graphic you're working on, set the fill to the same color as your background, and it looks like it's passing over your graphics, and that is a really cool effect as well. Before we move on, as you know, creating motion graphics from scratch is obviously very time consuming and it can be incredibly challenging. That's why we made over 5,000 templates to help you save time and produce awesome work under one subscription. For example, you can preview thousands of templates from any of our packs and click apply. Then you can change the template parameters and then you are done. So if you're looking to get an edge in your business or your career, check out every template we have with our links below. This one's gonna be a really cool one because you're gonna build a custom object, say in our case, a door frame with a light beam coming through it. So this is all about lighting uh, and really cool design. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab the rectangle tool, make sure the fill is set to white if you're working with a black background and we'll turn off the stroke for this one. And we'll come here and just draw out a rectangle because we're creating a door frame. So we'll wanna create this as close to the real door as possible. All right, once your door is created, we'll grab the pen tool here and we need to create the light beam. So make sure nothing is selected in your timeline. And we'll zoom in here and we'll simply add a point here to the corner of the door. And we'll just angle this outside the comp like this, hold down and shift to draw a straight line and then we'll just reconnect this light beam to the other corner of the door and we'll hold down shift to reconnect the two points together. So now we'll have this light beam in here and now we just have to texturize it. And if your beam looks a little bit awkward, you can grab one of the points that you created and just drag it out. This way it looks a little less awkward. With our light beam selected, we'll come here to effect generate and we'll grab a gradient ramp. Uh, we'll set our starter ramp to that white down there and we'll do our ender ramp to the end of the shape. We'll make sure where the light beam and door meet is set to white and we'll make sure that the end of color is just gonna gradually kind of fade away. You might need to move that anchor point to fit the correct angle and that's fine. So let's grab our door layer, go to effect, stylize and we'll grab the glow effect. Then we'll just simply duplicate it. We'll slide our glow radius up to say 200. And then we'll all click the stopwatch for glow radius there. And we'll type in wiggle, open parenthesis 2 comma 100. This way we'll create a really cool flickering doorway here. And then we'll just copy the glow effect, the top one, and we can paste it to the bottom uh, light beam layer. We might need to increase the glow threshold a little bit to like maybe 95% and increase the glow radius. So there'll be somewhat of a decent glow on here. And let's make sure the light beam layer is underneath the door layer. 
nice. And one thing you should absolutely do with this is create an adjustment layer, go to layer, new adjustment layer, uh, then go to effect, noise and grain and add the noise effect to this. This will help make the stand out even more, set the noise amount to 12% uh, and uncheck use color noise. And that will help make the stand out a little better. So now the only thing I'd like to do here is animate this. So we can grab our door layer, open it up, go to rectangle one, uh, go to rectangle path one, and we'll add a keyframe for size. We'll move forward, say maybe five seconds. We'll break the chain here and we'll just kind of decrease the X value. And then we'll come here to our light beam. We'll open the contents, go to the shape one, open up path one, and we'll grab our path here. And we'll come here to the beginning of our timeline, add a keyframe for path and go to the five second mark. And we'll just edit in our beginning anchor points like so. This way now, we have a cool object effect that just adds a realistic object to your scene. In this next technique, we're just gonna create a really cool wiggle line design. We'll come here to the top, grab the pen tool, set the fill off, and we'll turn the stroke on. And we'll draw a long straight line across like this. We'll open this up, we'll go to add, and we're gonna add wiggle paths to this. We'll open it up, come here to the detail and set this to five, set the points to smooth and the size up to 250. So now we'll have this line like so, and that's really cool. So then what we can do is we can hit R on keyboard for rotation, and we can set this to say 45 degrees or something like that. And then we can take our layer, we can duplicate it. And, you know, we can keep it like that. If we choose, we can continue to duplicate some of these, move them down, and we can create a very unique look with this by creating up to maybe seven to 10 of these duplicates. So when we have a few of these in here, we wanna help shade this into our background. So we'll grab one of the lines, we'll go to effect, uh, generate, and we're gonna grab gradient ramp to this. And we'll set our anchor points to each corner of the composition uh, for the gradient ramp. And I'll bring the white anchor point in to the center of our comp. So this way we'll create a blending effect. So if I copy our gradient ramp and paste it to each one, we've created this really nice fade and wiggle line effect really quick here in our third technique. This last technique is incredibly easy. We're gonna need some lines to go across your composition. Just add a slight design to your background. We'll use a stroke width of five and we're simply gonna draw out a straight line by holding down shift, a small one like this, that's great. We'll bring up P on our keyboard for position. We'll just have this go off frame. We'll add a keyframe for this and we can move forward in time, maybe three or four seconds. And we'll have this go across the comp like so. Now what we can do is open up our shape layer, go to add and we can just add a quick repeater to this. Open that up, go to transform repeater one, bring down the X position to say zero, bring down the Y. And actually maybe we will offset the X position in the negative Z space here. And then we increase the number of copies. Nice. So you can show the X value here to kind of position how you want these to be offsetted. Um, but that's really cool. So now what we'll do is take our lines layer, we'll duplicate it and we'll go back to the bottom repeater here. We'll go back to that transform repeater one and we'll increase the Y position to be in the opposite direction. So we'll do a negative 63 on that and nice. So now we should have this really cool line design like so. So what we can do is to do that quick loop out expression to the position of each one. And then we can take these layers, we can duplicate them, bring them up, and we can offset it in time. So now we'll have these repeated lines to go across our composition to have a really cool design. Be sure to download our free templates for After Effects and Premiere Pro, which comes with our Motion Duck extension. Those links are below. You can also look for our Instagram link as well. And you can give us a follow on there because we post some really cool After Effects and design concepts on our Instagram page. And always be creating.